Now that we're finished with our API development, it's time to now monitor the performance of our API. So let's take a look at some of the reports and logs in the ServiceNow platform that allow us to do this. In ServiceNow, there's a module called REST and SOAP API Analytics. It contains four submodules with a usage overview by API, by requester, and also an inclusion list. So if we have a look at the first one, usage overview, you can see here, as the name suggests, it contains an overview of the use of all your APIs in your instance, okay, in the last 30 days. If we scroll down, we can see the API usage by individual resource uh, for each day, and then the total values for the last 30 days. And same to with the type of the API itself, okay? If we go over to usage by API, then we can actually see how our particular API is performing. So in our drop down list over here, we can just select our vehicles API down the bottom there and apply that. And similar to the overview page that we just came from, you can see now the usage now for our particular vehicles API in the last 30 days by resource, by the method that was used and so forth. And if you actually drill down into one of these bars here, you can actually see essentially a summary of how many transactions or requests were made to that particular resource. So you don't actually see the details of the request itself. We'll get to that in a little bit, but you see a summary of how many transactions were performed. Okay, so if we come back, we can see again, API usage by method, by version, and API usage uh, in the month. All right, let's go to the third module here, usage by requester. So here we can see for our integration users that we're permitting to connect to our instance, our API, uh, we can just filter this list here according to our vehicle integration user and apply that. And if we come here to the actual API, we see here we don't see our vehicles API yet. Okay, we only see the table API. So what you'll need to do here is come over to the inclusion list and then search for your API, and then set the value of collect API requester stats to true, because by default, it's set to false. Okay, so we do that. And then we come back to our usage by requester here, and we go ahead and reselect our vehicle integration user. And if we go to the API drop down list here, we can see our API. It may actually take a few minutes for it to appear there. Uh, so we can now select that. And now we can see here, we've just made one request in the last 30 days, but that's only because we've just enabled the analytics for this API for the requester. So even though we actually have made more requests, it's only starting to capture data right now. So if we go back to Postman, we could actually just generate another request here, send that along, come back, refresh the page. And then we can see we've actually got uh, two calls now to two different resources. And we can also see the usage by method, again, similar to the other pages we've just looked at, uh, the usage by version and so forth. All right. So really helpful information about your API to see what version of your API is being used, what resources and who's using your API. So let's have a look now at some of the logs. In other words, have a more granular look at our API and the requests that are being made to it. So in this case, we'll go to our transactions application here. So under system logs, there are various links to transaction logs there. So what we need to click on here is just transactions. So not the user ones, not the background jobs that are being executed, not client interactions, uh, but just the general transactions. So here we can see all the transactions that have been made recently. If you scroll across a little bit, you can actually see the URL uh, that's being called here. So that will actually be the clue to our API calls here to see which calls or which transactions have hit our API. So we need to actually create a filter here to filter according to our API. And what we need to enter here is basically the namespace of our API. And I've actually taken the liberty of creating a filter here already for our vehicles API. And if you have a look at the conditions in the filter, you can see where the URL starts with slash API slash XSNC VH demo, okay, which is my application scope. Okay, so this will tell us all the transactions that have hit our API, irrespective of version and resource. 
And because there is a lot of information in here, um, what I've also done is just created a separate list view, also called vehicles, to show us more pertinent information, such as the user that connected to our API, the IP address that they came from, the agent that they were using when the process actually started, uh, the response time, SQL time, and the URL itself, which will actually tell us the resource that was hit. So if you need a little bit more information about who's hitting your API, what resource, what IP address they're coming from, you can take a look at that transaction log. So now you can pass off your API and the documentation, the tests and the reports to your local friendly system administrator and move on to your next task.